Welcome to Color Me Home, a podcast about paint and decorating and home improvement and creative projects and pretty much whatever else comes up in the conversation. I'm Dan and I'm Betsy. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We're going to talk about quick projects designed to help you increase the curb appeal of your home with very little expense, which is what we all love. Now, some of these projects, they're pretty obvious. You know, other ones, not so much. Now, but either way, they're all ideas that you can implement to make sure that the outside of your home looks beautiful as we finally, finally head into nicer weather. (laughs) We're hoping it's nicer weather. (laughs) We've got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Now, all right, as we've mentioned, today we're going to be talking about curb appeal on a budget. Now, curb appeal is important for a number of reasons. First off, if you're considering selling your home, the appeal that it has from the road, the way it looks, how well maintained it appears, is huge. The old saying, you only get to make a first impression once, is true. Now, if you're selling your home, it's imperative that the outside looks great. That's pretty obvious. But what if you're not? What if you're staying there and you have no intention of selling? Is curb appeal really that important in a situation like that? Absolutely. The look of our home impacts us whether we realize it or not. When our home looks good, when the exterior is beautiful and well-maintained, we feel a sense of pride and a sense of accomplishment. And it's important to note here that your house doesn't need to look like the houses in your favorite decorating magazines. We don't all have storybook houses, you know, Cinderella's castle to work with. And yet, even simple and plain houses can be beautiful and exhibit tremendous curb appeal if we just put in the effort. So no matter who you are or where you live, improving the curb appeal of your home is something you should consider doing. Now, okay, that's why improving the curb appeal of our home is important. Now, let's take a look at some great inexpensive projects, and let's start with what's probably the most obvious of them all, front doors. Absolutely. Now, (laughs) front doors are, you know, that's the place everybody comes to, all right? It's the most welcoming, or at least potentially could be, what we think of as the most welcoming part of the house. We hope. At least from the road, when people look by, when you drive past a house, one of the first things your eyes are drawn to, it's a focal point, is the front door of the house. We all do that. You know, there's a couple of places you generally look if you're just kind of letting your eye wander over a house, and front doors is one of them. With that said, one of the things that we want to make sure we do when we're talking about curb appeal projects is to tackle the front door. Make sure that that looks as good as possible. Right. There are a couple of things that you can do here. You've got everything from replacing the door. You know, Which that, is that's, expensive. It can be expensive. It's not as expensive as you might think. You know, It's if, not terrible. It's not terrible. You know, you can get a door for, you know, 100, right. 150 bucks. You can get Clearance a bin. nice door. <laughs> I didn't say it was a nice door. I just said hey, it was a door. they have nice doors in clearance bins. Well, see, there you... Okay, I thought you were slamming me already. No, no, I'm just... You're just I'm, saving that for later. You're yes, going to jump out later. Exactly. Cool. I'm glad you've caught on to this now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a great place to look. The clearance bin is... A fantastic place to look, you know, if you're not in the market, you know, but you know, at some point you want to do it, check them out when you're in the home centers or wherever they sell doors, you know, you can get one reasonably priced there, you know, didn't fit someone else's. So if it fits yours, great, you get a good deal. Exactly. Now that's if your door is in such bad shape that, you know, that's how you've, how you've got to fix it. We're advocating that, of course, there are other options and we always, you know, working at Repco Light. Paint seems paint. to be. Now, if you get a clearance bin door, paint is still an option. You still so might want to paint it because it might be a hideous avocado green color <laughs> exactly. that you can't stand. But don't think that you've got to get a brand new door. Sometimes, you know, we get that into our heads that everything's got to be brand new in order to right. make it look good. Right. Not the case. Paint can cover a multitude of sins. Yep. And it will look great. So if the new door but isn't in your budget, right. the next option would be to start with painting that front door. Right. And really, this is such a great project for so many reasons. One of the main ones is that it's so inexpensive. Yeah, a really, couple quarts. Exactly. A couple quarts at the most. Right. You know, depending on the color. Well, it depends on how many doors you've got. Well, and primer. Primer and, and the paint. So, right. So a couple quarts. A couple quarts. So you're talking anywhere from, you know, probably 45 to 60 bucks worth Roughly. of paint. Roughly. Yep. Somewhere in that range. A few tools. Yep. And then it's just some time in right. order to put that in there to clean that But door not up. a lot of time for just not, a door. It's not like painting a whole room. So a exactly. lot less time. You know, the front door project to me is one of those biggest bang for your buck projects. Right. For the time spent, the money spent, and then the results that you get from that. Yep. Because like we said at the beginning of this, as we started down this little path, everybody looks at that door. That's, that's where our eyes are right. drawn. If you can create a color there that's very interesting or that complements what you've got going on in the house – Maybe even right. your landscaping. All of that should come into play when you choose your color. 
But if you take the time to do that, it can have huge payoffs for very little expense. Well, and it's a great way to bring in a new color that you normally wouldn't use someplace else that you're just daring enough to try in just that little spot. And it's also a good place because you know you can repaint it if you really hate it without too much extra expense and without too much extra time. However, if your husband painted it the first time, you might find you have to paint it yourself the second now, time. Now, what is that supposed to mean? I'm just saying we have an awful lot of ladies who come in and they chose the wrong color the first time. And the husband says, you get to paint it this time. Gotcha. I thought you were <laughs> implying that our abilities are substandard. No, not at all. Of course not. No, okay. I would never say that. <laughs> never. <laughs> However, cool. usually the second time the husbands insist upon having, you know, something to say about the color that's going up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can see that. Yeah. No, all right. When you're choosing the color for the front door, one of the things to consider, there's no, there's a number of things to consider. You want to pay attention to everything around you, the siding that you've got going. Right. You know, when we talk about picking a crazy color or a bold color or something that you're, you know, trying to be a little more daring on, right. you still want to frame it around certain things, one of them being the siding of the house, the shutter color, right. the trim color, even your landscaping. You know, pay attention to what you've yes. got out there. Sometimes it's just annuals. Right. And, you know, you can build those colors towards matching yep. your front door. But right. perennials and things like that, you want to make sure that the color you put on the door, we've had situations yep. like this in the store where they painted colors on the door in the early uh -huh. spring and then by summer right. forgot that Looks the colors terrible. that came out. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, sometimes when you look at a color for your front door, it's nice to try to find those little flecks that are quite often in the roof and pull that color into your front door. It just kind of pulls everything together a little bit more. You don't want to fight because, you know, on sunny days, you can see all those little extra colors in your roof. So we don't want to fight that. Nobody wants to fight. No. My kids want to fight. We're on spring break, and that's what we've done <laughs> from the moment spring break started till I finally left to come record this. So I was actually kind of happy uh -huh. to come and record this, but it's just <laughs> nonstop bickering. Well, it's a good thing we're not fighting then, huh? That's right. Yeah. Well, you started it with the substandard work that men do, <laughs> but you kind of bailed yourself out. Exactly. So we'll See, I'm better at digging out of a hole than you are. <laughs> I'm just good at digging down into the hole. Uh -huh. you got to dig your way back out. Yeah. I'm All right. With front doors, front doors, you know, back to this. Yes. One question I have, because yes. it's a situation that I've got. What if there's a storm door? OK, so I've got okay. this nice front door. It's a right. great color. The previous owners, you know, we just moved in a couple years ago and it's good. I really don't want to change okay. it. I like what it does. But there's two storm doors. One of right. them is half of it is metal and the other half is glass. So a typical storm door. It's right. dark brown like the rest of the trim. Yep. The other door just off to its left, you know, a ways right. is uh, mostly glass, okay. but framed in brown. Right. What do I do? Am I just stuck? Do I have to leave the storm doors just brown? What color are your doors? The, doors, the main doors. The main doors are kind of a like a leaf green, like a muted leaf green color. Yeah, I can see why you don't want brown with it. Yeah, That's it just kind of dull and boring. Right. Looks like you're ready for hunting season yeah, all year round. It's pretty boring. Um, There are a couple things you can do. One of them is, you know, some people, if if you didn't want that color of a door and you wanted something else, some people like to have that brown frame around it because it matches their windows. You know, if the windows are framed in brown, then sometimes that's something you want to leave. So there's continuity across the whole front of your home. Um, if you love that green door, then there are a couple things you can do. You can go a little bit lighter than that green color if it's a darker shade of green you can go a little bit darker if it's a lighter shade so you know i'm thinking of that lavender door that's not too far down the road from the store here and i was thinking you know what would i do if there was a storm door in front of that well i would probably go with a deeper shade you know keeping it monochromatic deeper shade of that lavender color and it makes like a frame around your mm -hmm. door okay for the door that's half glass and half metal I would paint it the same color as the door behind it because otherwise you're going to chop that door in half and you're going to have a half and half look. It's going to look like a clown house. So the top half. No, wait a minute. Now you just said clown house. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cutting. <laughs> oh, you're saying it would look like a clown house. It would look like a clown house if okay. you cut it in half like so that. So you're not slamming me. I just want to be I'm clear not, on this. I'm not I'm kind slamming of, you. I've been I'm, on vacation. I'm, I'm trying thinking to get of back a clown car, actually. Well, you know, that's where like... I was afraid this was going. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it All would look like. All the little tiny people that come out of the that. clown car. Yeah, it's a short joke in a way. 
No, because usually the clown cars are small, but the people, the people are, are tall. Big, so it's the actually people... a compliment. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. See? So I'm making the... you feel better about yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying the door that's half metal and half glass. Right. Paint it the same color as the door behind it. Okay. Just because that the gives color. it a continuity all the way up. You're not seeing gotcha. the bottom half one color and the top and half another color. And just that little section that's another color. Right. It just it looks kind of odd Can when I you look at it. Can I paint both storm doors differently? Even yeah. though they're on the front of the house? Yeah, both you could visible? do that. Because okay. when you paint that half and half storm door, the same color as your door behind it, it's, it's gonna just, just going to blend gonna, in. Right. Okay. You're not going to have that difference. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's something to think about. I know... In, in looking at that situation on my own home, I started paying more attention to the houses around me. Right. And a lot of people have that. You know, they've got great colors on the doors. Right. But then they're hidden behind right. these plain, yep. basic, white storm doors. And I just wonder, does anybody else struggle with that? So oh, yeah. bring that up. Well, and you can, I mean, obviously you can paint the frame of the storm door that's all glass. You can paint that the same color as the door, too. Then it just kind of fades away into nothingness and... You know, it looks just like a solid color. Okay. And I have seen, no, it doesn't happen too often that someone has a wood front door and then a storm door over it. Most people who have wood doors don't have a storm door. But I have seen a couple, and the storm door is where they bring in their little pop of color. So if you have the storm door in front of your wood door, I recommend painting it, you know, a really fun color just makes that door pop. I, it's really stunning when it's done. Okay, so if the door behind is is a wooden door. Right, Okay. right. It's just something to think about. You know, some people would just paint it brown, like you said. Um, but that's a really good place to bring okay. in just a little pop of color. just frames the door really nicely. Think of the storm door, especially if you have a full glass, as a frame for the door behind it. The door it. behind. Cool. Right. All right, so front doors, great place to start. Um, one probably very, very brief caveat is just if you do have a storm door, a glass storm door, mm -hmm. especially in front, you do want to be a little careful with that color you put on your door behind. Right. Because a lot of heat can build up in those areas. We've oh, seen yeah. problems with that where actually even the molding around the windows has yep. melted and warped. Right. Because there's too much color. So right. pay attention to that. Try to find a medium tone color. Yep. If it's encased behind a storm door, yeah. you know, that's that's largely glass. Yep. Because it's gonna heat up so it much. It gets hot in there. <laughs> <laughs> so with uh, with um, front doors, one other quick option, another obvious place to start when you're talking about curb appeal projects that aren't gonna cost you an arm and a leg, but which will produce great results, a garage door yeah. would be another one. So yep. we're not going to belabor the point because it's basically the same thing as a right. steel door or a front yep. door. Again, a couple of quarts of paint, yep. and you can make a tremendous difference right. just by doing that garage door. Yeah, it just kind of cleans it up a little bit. You know, In the process of doing this, you're going to have to clean everything, but it just it gives it such a fresh new look. You know, That's really what you're going for with all these things is making it look like you've done major improvements, and really you haven't done that much. It's been easy. And by doing a front door and a garage door, just those just those two right. will convey a huge amount of area. A garage door covers a large area, and the front doors are focal right. points. So just yep. making those changes will convey the idea of a very well-maintained home. Right, exactly. So you've got garage doors. You've got front doors. What other areas could we tackle? I would recommend uh, moving on to your shutters after all of that because, you know, that's the frame to your windows after all. A lot of people don't have shutters at all. So one of the first places to start would be to add shutters. Right. It adds a tremendous amount of visual appeal from yes. the road. Like you said, it frames the windows. Yep. It really can make a difference on a home. If you look at some pictures, just Google some pictures where, you know, before and after shots, without shutters and with shutters. It's um, amazing. We'll put some of those... I'll have to find what I can legally use, <laughs> uh -huh. but I'll see what I can find for the show notes where you just see a tremendous difference, yeah. remarkable difference just by adding shutters alone. Yeah, it's amazing what it does to dress up your house a little bit. It just adds that little bit of extra interest that draws people's eyes to the front of your home. So if you don't have shutters, consider that as an option to add. Now, right. a little more expensive, we're back into the idea of talking about, you know, putting a new door on. You know, right. it's you've hit a little higher level of expense. Right. But it's the so payoff good. is so huge that it's worth it. Right. So if you don't have shutters, add them. What if you do have shutters? A lot of us have the old vinyl shutters on my house when we moved in a couple years ago. It's got these old uh, brown vinyl yep. shutters, which at one point I'm sure looked really good. 
but now they're all faded. They're uh-huh. chalky. You know right. that look. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so what do you do about that? Right. Well, there are a couple options. You can clean them up and use Dan's favorite trick on them, and I'll let him tell you about that, or you can paint them, which okay. is always a fantastic thing to do because so, we're in the you know business <laughs> of selling paint. <laughs> and that's a great, great solution, and a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that the vinyl shutters can be painted. Right. You know, there are a couple things that we want to dig into real quickly here as we talk about this. But be aware that painting your vinyl shutters is a very viable option. It has great results. Uh, There are products specifically made for that purpose that will bond to the vinyl. Benjamin Moore Revive. I suggest if you have vinyl, vinyl siding or vinyl shutters, you check it out. It bonds to vinyl unbelievably well. And that was called Benjamin Moore Revive. Revive. You're like reviving the siding. I guess. It's a revival of your siding <laughs> or your shutters, I suppose. So what that product is, now there, I guess there are a couple things. The product is, just as Betsy explained, a product that's designed for vinyl siding. But the big issue that we've run into in the past with vinyl siding is that it can tend to warp. If you go, right. the, the old way of thinking about this is if you put a color that's darker than your existing vinyl, uh, so whether it's we're talking about shutters or whether we're talking right. about uh, siding, the actual siding, vinyl Correct. siding of your home, if you go with a color darker than the original, there's the tendency that the vinyl siding could actually warp, and buckle. It, and it does. I mean, we just had one not too long ago. A customer called and one of our guys went out to look at it. And sure enough, they used a color that caused their siding to warp. And it, it looks awful. <laughs> Now, they Absolutely used regular terrible. paint, right. so they didn't use the Benjamin Moore Revive, right? and they used a darker color than the actual color, right. the original color on the siding, right. and that's where the problem comes in. Yes. So with Benjamin Moore's Revive, this is what makes this product interesting, is that it comes with a full palette of colors that are called vinyl-safe colors. Right. So how do, how many did we estimate there were? 350 About 300 to 350. Darker, lighter Kind of all spectrums, all kinds of colors, reds, browns, grays, blues, navy blues, everything. So a full range of exterior colors. Right. You know, and any of these colors, because of how they're formulated, can be put on any color of vinyl siding. Right. You can I'm saying that correctly, right? Yes. You can have people wrong. Any color. Now this is something that might come up. You might have vinyl siding that someone else has painted. Say you started with a beige color. And then someone else had painted white over top of it. The paint's still holding great, but you don't want a white house anymore. You want dark green or dark blue or something like that. Everybody loves that. I know. I was thinking of you when I said that. (laughs) (laughs) So you want to paint it darker. The thing with the Revive and vinyl safe formulas, they are formulated without black in them. That black is what causes the siding to heat up and that's what causes it to warp. So... If you choose from this palette of colors, you can paint it navy blue. And as long as you're with these vinyl safe colors, you'll be just fine. So back to the shutters, that would be a perfect solution. Takes right. a little bit of time, yep. you know, to paint a shutter. That's right. not quite as easy as painting a front door. Right. You know, we'd recommend that you get them off of the house. That's going to be the easiest. Absolutely. Wash them with a product we call TSP, trisodium phosphate. You just mix it out in a little bit of water. It's a, a great cleaning agent Painter's when you're going to paint. Painter's best friend. You should use it when you paint your walls or anything. Right. It will. It will it's a degreaser. It will remove, you know, some a lot of yep. surface contaminants, and it rinses clean away when you rinse right. it with water. Yep. So a great prep when you're painting right. anything. Make sure you rinse it when you're done. You can't just put it on there and leave it. Some people make the mistake of doing that, and there's still a residue, and you just end up with a mess. Right. Make sure you rinse it off. So wash it with TSP, but you're going to want to take it down. You're not going to want to put TSP on your house if you've got vinyl. Well, if you've got anything on there, because TSP could dull vinyl siding, all of those things. You're going to want to make sure you've got the shutters off the house. Wash them well. Rinse them well. Wipe them with your hand when they're dry, just as a test to make sure that you've got no chalky residue coming off in your hand. Because paint is going to bond on the surface on these vinyl shutters. Right. If you've got a soft or a chalky or a surface contaminant there... The paint can potentially bond to that. Right. And then when that lets go of the siding, you can have peeling problems. Yep. So make sure that when you wipe them with your hand, that it comes away clean. There's no residue there. Right. And then you're ready for paint. Yep. And that's where we recommend the Benjamin Moore Revive in yeah. any of these vinyl safe colors. And you can make a tremendous difference on the home. Again, yeah. a little bit of work, a little more work than painting a door, 
but still well, a tremendous impact. Bad. Yeah. Well, you've got more shutters, I guess is what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, that is true. Some of those houses have a lot of Some shutters. of them are very high. <laughs> yeah. The ladder I have, I'll just need to borrow a ladder or a tall person. Oh, well, I would need to borrow you a said tall that person, in such too. a sad way, too. It was, well, that's right. You're no, you're no taller. <laughs> no. <laughs> we both can't reach the top shelf <laughs> exactly. at Myers. Have you ever had that? Well, of course you've had yeah, that. Yeah, because I stand on the bottom shelf and reach and reach. I jump. <laughs> I jump. And that is. See, then you look foolish. I... That's why you stand on the bottom <laughs> shelf. <laughs> See, I don't think I look foolish. I think I look cool. No, let me clarify. I think right. I could look cool. Except my vertical jump literally <laughs> is two feet. It's like I am. It's like I'm rubber banded to the floor. I jump for everything I've got, and I uh -huh. literally go two inches. Two in Did I say two feet? Yes. You oh, did. <laughs> not even remotely close. Wow. <laughs> that would be amazing. Two inches. Two stinking inches. I jump, and that's all I go. I put all my momentum, all my energy into these jumps. When and we, you get nowhere with it. I get it. nowhere when we and play. And so then you really look silly. Then I do because then stuff falls out of my pockets. <laughs> and then, you know, other people come and they just, you know, they give me the pity glance and then reach it down for me. Right. I want one of those little gripper things, you know, with on the pole where you could, uh -huh. with like the dinosaur mouth, uh -huh. only bigger where I could grab boxes off the shelf right. and stuff. I think they sell those. Well, yeah. At the same store probably I that you're going and buying feel like groceries that would be, at. I don't know that I could take that big a hit on my you know, ego to go into <laughs> yeah. a store with a shopping buddy like that, you know, a reaching buddy. Right. Oh, mm. you never I, know. I just ditch some things sometimes. If I can't reach it, just I just leave ditch it. it. Go find something else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't need yes. that cereal. Right. I can eat this. Exactly. Even though it's on the bottom shelf where everybody's feet are. Right. Those are the things we end up eating. Even though it tastes like cardboard. <laughs> Exactly. That's okay. Okay. Okay, so, so now the shutters back that to are shutters. Too high. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're back to shutters. But I want to make sure we talk about this little fix that I've found right. that, that I think is just absolutely amazing and everybody needs to, to really pay attention. Of course, so, because you came up with it, right? I, I didn't come up with it. No. <laughs> oh. This was given to me. Oh. I would like to say by monks in Tibet, but no, just from a guy sitting at the desk across from me, oh. you know, in the other office. I thought you were going to tell me it was someone very old and wise. No. And... Well, he is very old. Oh. I don't know about wise, but <laughs> no, he is. So Mike Decker, if you're listening, just to throw out to you, oh. thanks, for, thanks for the input here. But anyway. And he did just call you old. I did, yeah, but I've called him that to his face before. Okay. Anyway, so with my shutters, remember I mentioned in the beginning that they were dull and faded and right. chalky and all yep. of that. And I didn't want to go – I didn't have time to go into a repaint project, okay? Now, that doesn't take a lot of time. Right. I don't want to sell it that it's uh -huh. such a huge amount of work. But for me, I had a few right. hours literally to, to get these things. And I just wanted to make them look good. Right. And I wanted to test this anyway. Right. Now, what Mike recommended was a product called Penetrol. Yes. So Penetrol is an additive that we put into oil-based paints. And it's typically right. designed to – Extend the dry time a little bit, make it flow out a little better, remove mm -hmm. brush strokes, all of those things. It's right. a product that you add to oil-based paints. Usually. Usually. Except That's, in this case. Except in this case. What I did and what he recommended was we take the Penetrol and we just brush it onto the shutters. Mm -hmm. Okay? So right. I got these old, chalky, faded black or, um, brown shutters and okay. I brushed this on and no lie, they completely revived. I don't mean a little bit revived. I don't mean... You know, that it kind of got halfway. Right. This was like brand new shutters. The ones that That's were That's amazing. It was amazing. The sad thing was half of the shutters around the house, especially on the back side of the house, right. had been painted. They were another color, so oh, they'd been painted. Yeah. So the paint had flaked and peeled. Right. On the front, they were truly just brown vinyl shutters. Right. On the front shutters, they look brand new. So what I did was we take this Penetrol, we brush it onto the shutters, right. let it sit for just a few minutes, and then I just wiped it with a rag to, to get the excess off. Right. That's right? easy. Very easy. Very quick. I was flying around the side of the house. Didn't take me much time at all. I could reach them all. They were all reachable. I don't Ooh. have a two-story. <laughs> so we buy houses based <laughs> no on height. No extension ladder needed. No, none at all. <laughs> but it went very quick. The only thing that I ran into is with the louvers. Mm -hmm. uh, is oh, yeah. I had a couple parts where it dripped, and I right. didn't catch that. So you'd want to double-check that. Right. But really, you just brush it on, let it sit for a few minutes, wipe it clean with a rag, and move on. Let it dry. I did that last summer, and they still look almost brand new. Wow. So completely revitalized them. All it cost me were the, I think it was $12, $13 for that right. pint of yep. Penetrol, and it goes forever. Right. So a great fix if you're trying to revitalize your shutters, if they're old vinyl, and you just want to do something quick that right. will maybe get you a year or so. It's not going to be the end-all fix. Painting right. them is going to last much longer 
you know, down the road, right. definitely the way to go. So this is a good thing for those people who are going to have graduation parties this year and want to lo- make the house look good before everyone gets there for the party. And they don't really have time because there's so much else going on. Exactly. <laughs> it's perfect for something like that where you've got good. a time frame. Very quick fix. I'll right. put the put it all in the show notes. I believe I've got photos. I was going to dig into that before we recorded this to Ooh, make sure. Perfect. I know I took photos, but then I had phone problems. And I'm not sure Uh, that I saved the photos. Mm -hmm. But if I do, you'll see. It's just a remarkable, it's a night and day difference. Can't recommend it enough. So we'll put that in the show notes. Perfect. Thank you. So shutters are a great option. Right. Great option to make a change. Let's grab one more before we wrap it up for today. And how about mailboxes? That's another obvious one that people, you drive past. In fact, think about it. When you're driving past a house trying to find an address or something like that, you're checking out the front door, right. you know, where the numbers typically are. You're also checking out mailboxes. Here's a great project, very, very quick, Yeah, that you can make a tremendous impact. Right. And, you know, for those people who don't have numbers on your mailbox, please put them on there. It makes your house a whole lot easier to find, especially if I'm coming to do a color consultation <laughs> for you and I can't find your house. <laughs> and it also just looks cool. I mean, with yeah. all the different fonts that you can use, all the different right. ways to represent that those numbers, yeah. it doesn't have to be boring. Right. And, you know, you were saying your kids are off for spring break this week. They're fighting. Yes, they're fighting right now. I yeah, guarantee Yeah, we'll see. If you had had the artist amongst all of your kids paint your mailbox, it would have kept at least one of them out of the fighting. Because <laughs> that's that. what my mom did. She had a plain black mailbox and she wanted flowers and you know she had white stripes not the band <laughs> painted on her mailbox by my sister so she didn't have the it, that's a big hair band no. right she didn't have them a, no. a big decal on the mailbox no just stripes my dad might have liked that <laughs> but my mom not so much yeah. she's more of a you know classical kind of person All right that white stripes not so much not up so her much. alley now so yeah i mean it it looked fantastic you know beautiful what did your sister end up doing it was just the white stripes all across from one side to the other and then she put some flowers across the bottom bright colors you know pinks and blues greens yellows you know very stunning so it's a great thing to do you know jazz it up don't just have it be boring and don't just paint it one color you know think outside the box and you know what fun things you can do You've got all kinds of different options, you know, like a black mailbox, you know, just keeping it simple if that's all you're, but then dress up the font that you use to, to right. number it or to, to put your name on there. Right. If you've got a creative kid or you've got kids that are fighting, you just want to get them out of the house and don't care what the results are. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm making a mental note right now because our <laughs> mailbox is in need of work, but that would be another option just to expand, right. you know, test your creativity, see what you right. can come up with. Well, and then kids feel like, They've been included on something, and it's, you know, really important because it's your mailbox. And I've seen mailboxes with kids' handprints on it before. Very cool. That so, can be very cool. So, you know, I mean, include everyone. Don't just think, you know, oh, it's my mailbox, you know. Get everyone involved. It's definitely a place where you can make a little bit of a statement about the personality of the right. people in the home, the right. personality of your home. Yeah. And, again, like we mentioned with the front door, it's a very small investment time-wise. Yep. And if you absolutely hate it. Unless you had your kids paint it, because I got papers from I don't know how long ago that I can't throw away. Because Every parent does. The big tears start to form. You're throwing away my my toilet paper roll cotton ball sheep. <laughs> yes. Because yep. you've got a whole flock. We don't need one more. Yes, you do. <laughs> exactly. Every member of the flock is important. Right. Well, there you go. So if you bring your kids in, realize you're probably stuck with what they come up put on there. But think right. outside of the box, as Betsy was saying. Right. And come up with something interesting on the mailbox. Yeah. And once you've updated your mailbox, think about what you can put around your mailbox. Maybe a small flower bed, you know, some bright colors that highlight the mailbox, some rocks or something like that. Just a small garden area. Yeah. You know, just very tiny, but just around there. Maybe just some pots of plants. Or they sell, I saw it. I don't know where, in a catalog somewhere, they sell a mailbox kit of seeds or something. And it's specifically made because then the vines or whatever crawl up the post of your mailbox or something if it's at the road. So they sell things like that. It's very cool. Bright colors. It really dresses it up. Well, I guess that's going to do it for today's episode of Color Me Home. We're hoping that these projects we talked about will give you a little something to think about and some things that you can do on your own home and what will make it look even better. 
And remember, you don't have to have the storybook cottage in order to have it be beautiful. These projects are for anybody and for any home. So next time you're outside enjoying the hopefully nice weather well, after the snow today, it's well, coming, spring break's right? over. It's going to get awesome now. Well, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> next time you're out enjoying the beautiful weather, pay some attention to the exterior of your home. A few simple projects are all that you might need to take your home from average to absolutely amazing. All right. Thanks, Betsy. And before we go, we'd like to thank you all for listening. In our next episode, we're going to dig into a few more curb appeal projects that will help you improve the exterior appearance of your home without costing you an arm and a leg. Be sure to check back. Or better yet, you can go to repcolite.com, click the Color Me Home link on the homepage, and then subscribe to our podcast via RSS feed or now, this is fancy, (gasps) on iTunes, which is just fun to say. That's exciting. And if you've got any topics that you'd like us to discuss, then you can email Dan and I at colormehome at repcolite.com. Just drop us an email and, you know, we really love to hear from you guys. And don't forget to share all of our episodes on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Until next time, thanks for listening. You've been listening to Color Me Home, sponsored by Repcolite Paints and Benjamin Moore. Everything discussed in this episode can be found in our show notes at repcolite.com. Just click the Color Me Home tab on the home page. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can contact Betsy and Dan by email. The address is colormehome at repcolite.com. That's colormehome at repcolite.com. <laughs>